All right, guys, before we kick off today's episode, I had a little word from our sponsor, me, and that is my new Elite Property Foundations course, which is a novice investor training program. It's eight weeks long. It um, teaches you everything you need to know about how to value property. You'll get basically you'll get a lot of confidence in yourself and your decision making if you watch uh, if you go through this program. And included in the price is a 12 month mastermind, and that is we meet on a monthly basis and we compare notes, talk with the other members, things like that. So hopefully this sounds of interest to you. I'll leave a link in the show notes below. All right, guys, I guess it should come as no surprise at all that unlocking your full potential and boosting your productivity and your efficiency would make for a popular episode. And it turns out that many of you enjoyed last week's episode so much that you've actually wrote messages to me. I got quite a few messages that they really, really, that you really, really enjoyed the episode. And, um, and so I thought, okay, well, I'm on a roll, why not go and do another one? And this week I'm going to go again. It's going to be something that complements what we talked about last week, and that is how to plan the next 12 months, or as I'm calling it, how to supercharge your year. Now, on the topic of last week's episode, um, I was talking about my, my habits and my morning routine and stuff and the fact that I like to do fasting. I just thought I would mention, kind of in passing really, is that as I'm recording this now, I'm in the middle of a 36 hour fast. And the reason I'm actually, j- I've just passed the 24 hour mark and it's like 24 hours and 15 minutes at this stage or thereabouts. And you tell me, do I sound or do I look like I'm in bad shape 24 hours without eating anything? I've just been drinking water and you, you, you know, you tell me, do I sound like I'm struggling? I don't think so, but you know, maybe, maybe you can hear it in my voice better than I can. All right, let's get into the main event, how to supercharge your year. And we're going to be diving into some of my peak productivity tips. So how do I begin planning my year? As I mentioned last week, I have quite a few morning rituals that I that I like to kind of do on a daily basis. And one of them is to scan what I refer to as my values and identity. And this is something that I've recorded on the Notes app in my phone so that I can take it out and I can remind myself anytime what it is that I stand for, who do I want to be, who do I, how do I want to show up? And that is my values, okay? My values are this reminder to kind of keep fresh in my mind how I want to show up on a daily basis. Now, the reason that this is popped into my mind and and I wanted to talk about it first was because today I had what I refer to as a values-based morning. And what I did was I, I dropped my daughter to school and then I stopped in the cafe and I took out my journal and I started going through my goals and I started reviewing how am I doing on my goals. It's the 27th of the month as I'm recording this, 27th of March. And so we're almost at the end of the month. And I want to reflect on how have I done this month? Is there anything that I need to work on? Is there anything that's not particularly effective or not working that I need to change? All of this kind of stuff is stuff that I work on to try to just figure out how can I optimize the way I do things and and my life in general. After I finished that, I was looking up, I was in a cafe in Shank Hill in, in Dublin, near to where uh, we we're building these houses. And I was looking up and I could see the lead mines. Now, the lead mines, if you're not familiar with Dublin, is uh, it's a chimney that dates back to like the 1850s or something like that. And this chimney is where they used to produce lead shot that goes, the pellets that go into shotgun cartridges. And so um, uh, it's an old chimney that sits on the hillside. And I thought, you know what, I want to run a stroke hike up to there today. So put on my runners and I started running and I got up there, it took me, the total journey took me about an hour and a half or thereabouts. It's about a 10 kilometer run, but it's all uphill all the way. And and then you've got kind of rocky ground and stuff to try to get over. So it took a bit longer than I normally would for a 10K, but then came back, went to my gym, had a steam for 15 minutes and then got into an ice cold 
shower. And I have to say, I feel absolutely fantastic having done that. So that is my values based morning. And, you know, if you guys are interested in creating like your core values, what I suggest you do is start thinking about what it is, how do you want to show up? Like in my case, for example, just to kind of cut through it, I have three to five words that I like to have on my phone that'll instantly remind me of what it is that I, I'm trying to do or, or how I want to show up. So in my case, for example, clarity, focus and discipline, CFD. I, rem- I instantly can recite my values as CFD, clarity, focus, discipline. Now I have a few more that I can list off, but the ones that are absolutely front of mind are clarity, focus and discipline. And by clarity, I mean, I'm totally clear on where I'm going and why. And I'm going to get into this in a little bit more detail in today's episode. By focus, I mean that I have laser focus on the goals as per the clarity that I just mentioned. And if you don't have that kind of focus, you're going to drift from one distraction to the next. And that, well, maybe you're better at this than I am, but I find that I get terribly distracted unless I'm super focused and I'm and I'm really concentrating on how I, you know, the goals that I have and what I'm trying to achieve. And one of the things that I suggest is that you'll have your top priorities for, say, this month. And you know that that's what you're striving for, to complete by the end of the month. You should, at the beginning of the month, when you set your, your, your priorities, we'll say you set, you know, three priorities. You should be able, without any hesitation at all, you should be able to list off those priorities at the absolute drop of a hat, blink of an eye. And the reason that you want to be able to do that is that that reminds you of what it is that your your objectives are for the end of the month. Now, by discipline, I mean, certainly in my case, I like to do things that are difficult and that are tough. I like to think of myself as a badass. And so doing stuff that, I, that other people would consider to be too difficult or too unpleasant. That's the kind of stuff that I like to kind of go for. So, for example, uh, the 10 kilometer run up the hill to the lead mines today. Now, for some people, that's a lovely walk. And so don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that there are certain things that, uh, you know, in bad weather, that would be unpleasant for most people. I'll run out and I'll do that in bad weather because I want to push myself through. That's discipline cold shower in the morning that's discipline uh, the 36 hour fast you know there's a bit of discipline in that and all of this discipline it's just something that it means something to me it doesn't necessarily mean anything to you so choose your values like what do you consider to be most important to you and how you want to show up now, now discipline for some people could simply be the ability to put away the their telephone so that they're not scrolling through tiktok or whatever other people, it might be their ability just to say no to the, you know, the sweets and the, and, the, and the processed food and stuff like that. You set your values, get them very clear in your head. The next step in the plan um, for the year is, and, and I always start kind of with the big picture stuff first and then narrow it down as I go. It's your vision for the future. And I'm not talking about your vision for the next 12 months. I'm talking about your vision way into the distance, like... In my case, I like to think out 25 years, we'll say. And there's two reasons for this. Um, Number one is to get that clarity that we're talking about. But number two, visualization is really key. And a lot of athletes and and high performance people, they'll use visualization to help achieve their goals. Now, let's go back to the first one, clarity, okay? So you knowing what it is, like people will say, if you sort of say, what do you want to achieve in your life? I want to be successful, okay? The word successful. What does success mean to you? I can tell you it'll mean probably an awful lot different to what I deem success to be. Everyone has a different portrayal of what successful looks like. Okay. To some people, it's a million in the bank. To other people, it's having a, you know, we'll say a best selling novel. To other people, it's, you know, making it big on YouTube. To other people, it's, you know, getting first place in your medical exam, whatever it might be, choose what makes you, what you feel is successful and then aim for that. And 
be very, very clear on what success means for you. Because if you're not clear, a lot of people make this mistake of, I want to be rich, I want to have a million in the bank, okay? And they'll strive for that and strive for that and strive for that. And then you hit this point, oh wow, I've just made a million, it's sitting in the bank. Now what? Like, that is, you know, when you run out of mov momentum and you run out of motivation because you've achieved the big goal that you were driving towards. And if you look around then and look in the mirror and suddenly find, whoa, I'm really overweight, I've kind of, you know, let myself go. Well, you achieved what you set your mind on. You set your mind on making a million. You didn't set your mind on all the other stuff. And so that's what it's about. And as I mentioned, everyone's different. In my case, freedom, freedom of money, freedom of time, freedom of purpose. That is what I kind of deem successful. And, you know, there will be people out there who think 80 hours a week working in a high pressure job so they can get paid really, really well is worth it. Personally, I don't, but, you know, each to their own. Making, you know, some people it's lifestyle, other people it's travel, other people it's work, whatever it might be, just get clear on it. And then look at yourself 25 years from now and try to visualize what your life looks like. And by that, I mean, where do you see yourself in 25 years? What are you going to be doing in 25 years? How do you look in 25 years? Uh, where will you be living? What will your home look like? What will you be driving if that's important to you? I, I get it. Some people don't care about their car. Some people will be happy to kind of, you know, share, share a car or whatever it is. Make it personal to you. Um, who are you going to be with? Like, do you have a family? Is that part of your plan to have a big family, small family, to get married, not to get married? Like, whatever it is, figure it out and put that in there, in that vision. What will you be, okay? Some people, entrepreneur. Other people, a doctor. Other people, solicitor. Whatever it might be, what will you be? What will you have, okay? Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, ownership of certain things, like meaning, you know, having a huge mansion, we'll say. I mean, that was important to me when I was a younger guy. Uh, it's not really that important to me now. I do like architecture, so I appreciate good quality architecture. So I do like the idea of a nice house that has been designed well and things like that. But do I need this big, huge like mansion? No, I don't. In terms of the car that I drive, I do like my cars. So to me, I have an idea of the type of car that I would like and the brand and things like that. But each to their own, what uh, will your life look like? And probably the most important thing is what will you be known for? And that can be known for in, in any sort of set. You could be known for being a philanthropist and, and donating lots of money to charity. You could be known for being the best at doing a certain type of thing in your community. Whatever it might be, figure it out and put it there in your vision and have a very, very clear vision. Now, this is the second point that I mentioned earlier, visualization. The more real it is in your mind, then the more likelihood you are of achieving it. And so you got to make it as visceral as possible, like make it so that you can touch and feel and smell it. And this is something that athletes do all the time. And the, the more closely it feels real in your mind's eye, then the more realistic it feels. And, and then when you set these plans to achieve it, the more likelihood it is of you actually achieving those plans. These long term visions the reason that I think they're so important is because ultimately, I think it allows you to start breaking down a strategy to achieve your ultimate long-term goal. There's a thing called the BHAG, the Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. And it comes from, I think it's a Jim Collins book um, that, you know, from, from about, I think at this stage, it's probably 20 years ago. But imagining your future, that that big, hairy, audacious goal, that is your vision for the future. And that is what you're aiming for. And make it ambitious. So this is not something that'll be easy to achieve, but it's something that over a period of 25 years, you can achieve it. Then you start to break it down into smaller increments. So what we'll do is, if you have that clarity that the long-term goal, then you know, this is where I start. I'm starting here, I have nothing. I'm aiming for this big, hairy audacious goal 25 years from now what is the direction that i'm going it's only with that clarity around your long-term vision that you can start to map out and, and 
create a strategy to achieve it. Um, otherwise, you're just going to wander through life and things are going to happen to you by accident. You might be successful, to, but it might be a success, or you might be a successful doing something that you have absolutely no desire to do. Um, a lot of people, they, they go in, they study a, a certain degree in college because their parents wanted them to do that. But they didn't actually think or consider this themselves until they became the solicitor or the doctor or whatever. And then they're kind of like, why am I doing this? Like, I have absolutely no enjoyment of doing this. I want to do something completely different. And then they embark on doing what it is they want. So that is the point of this exercise. Make sure that you are going to achieve what it is that you actually want to achieve and that you're going to, you know, be very, very happy when you reach it. Now, for example, crossing the Atlantic. If you were to get into a boat and say, I want to go to New York City, I'm going to cross the Atlantic. If you just sailed out, not knowing the direction that you're going, you could end up thousands of miles from New York. So it's knowing the path that you're going and setting the direction so that you know that by the time you get on this long journey, you know that you're on the right path and you know you're going. So you break down your big, hairy, audacious goal. You break it into smaller stepping stones or what I call milestones. So for example, and I'm going to use a small example here, like, but let's say you decided I'm going to run a marathon in 2023. Now, could I go out and run one tomorrow? No, I can't because I haven't done any training for a marathon. So there's no chance I would be able to run one tomorrow. However, let's, let's say next November, the New York City Marathon is in November every year. Could I achieve that? I think I probably could. And therefore, I am going to go out and start training for a marathon in November. Now, in my case, I would have the, I would be looking at it's 42 kilometers to run a marathon and I have eight months to run it. November is in eight months. So let's say four months from now, I want to be hitting the 21 kilometer mark, at least to know that I'm on the right path to getting to 42 by the end of eight months. And so 20 kilometers in four months is my target. So let's break back from that then. What would my target be in two months? It would be approximately a 10K. And therefore I say to myself, okay, the goal for the next two months is a 10K. So by the end of this month, I should be running at least 5K. Because if I'm running 5K by the end of this month, I would hope to be hitting 10K by the end of next month and so on. You can kind of see the direction that you're going and you also know whether you're on the right path or not. If at the end of the month you're still only doing three kilometers, then you either have a lot of work to do or you're not going to achieve your ultimate goal. Another way of putting it is how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time? So just break these big goals into much smaller, more manageable chunks, and it becomes a lot easier. Now, before we go any further on the whole goal thing, it's the next thing is, is establishing a purpose, okay? What is your why? And do you have a purpose? Or are you clear on what your purpose is? Now, this is something that uh, people like Simon Sinek talk about, like, what's your why? And uh, the reason why it's so important is because when you, when you look back on your life at some point in the future, let's say fast forward 60 years and you're on your deathbed and you're there and you're looking back and you're reflecting on your life, like what do you want it to mean? What do you want to be able to say, yeah, I did a pretty good thing. I did this or I achieved that or whatever. That's going to be the overall meaning of your life or the, the purpose, the overarching purpose that you made your life about. Now, the reason why that's important is because if you have a purpose, if it's clear to you and it motivates you and it inspires you and it gives you energy, then you're going to push through the difficult times. And it's like when I talk about, you know, my the, the difficulties I had in 2008, you know, when, when I went through all of the difficulties with the, the global financial crash, when that happened, you know, it could be very easy to kind of just give up and say, right, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm out. And, and, and that's it. But if you have a bigger purpose or if you have like a vision for the future, well, then you can weather those storms and you can push on through. And that's the whole idea here is life throws you curveballs, we'll say, or 
you're going to get you're going to have barriers and obstacles on your way and if you have a strong enough purpose you'll push through those but if you don't have a purpose you'll be like why am i doing this Psh, i'm just going to give up here and, and and move on to the something easier and that is you'll never achieve anything if you don't push through the hard uh, things and the obstacles um, now, the next thing is, well, just to let you know, in, in terms of having, I've got my big why, my purpose, but I've also got um, a kind of a daily reminder, the purpose, like why I'm doing all what I'm doing. Why do I work as hard as I do? I have what I call my five F's, okay? My five F's are my family, my fitness, my finances, my flame, and my freedom, okay? And by flame, I mean the burning passions, the, the kind of, the things that really light my fire. And those are being able, when I said my, you know, having the freedom of purpose, that's what I mean, to be able to go after the stuff that really, really inspires me and motivates me. Now, starting to get into a little bit more detail now, the next 12 months, and this is what I like to establish, the big goal for the year, or the target for the year. And what I call it is, I call it my mission, all right? Your mission this year you know the old impossible mission movies your mission if you choose to accept it but it sounds a bit corny when i say it like that but your mission is what are you aiming to achieve in the next 12 months and now you can have 12 months that has you know multiple goals so you might have a fitness goal you might have a professional goal you might have a personal travel goal whatever it might be those are all fine but you have an overarching one that will be your mission that it is the most important goal to achieve is this. And so I call it my mission. And that might be to achieve a certain level of you know, financial standard or, your, or to achieve something in work or whatever it is. It's up to you. But the reason that it's important to have one is because that one mission, it's your kind of, it's your, you're driving towards that. The other stuff is important, but you have to have kind of the big picture that you're kind of aiming for. And a lot of the time, your mission is one of those incremental steps along the path to your B, your big, hairy, audacious goal. And also incorporate, say, your purpose into that as well. Now, you can have lots of goals, but the big one is important. So you have your mission, you have your goals, and then you start to break it down. So your mission is your 12-month, you know, your big 12-month target. What you do then is break it down into your three-month goals. And so your quarterly objectives, as I call it. And so in the next three months, what am I going to achieve? So for back in December, I would have set January, February, March. And so one of the reasons why I was reviewing my, my, my objectives this morning is because we're coming to the end of the month. So 27th of March, almost the end of the first quarter. And therefore, I have to now start thinking, okay, I'm going to be setting the next quarter's objectives and so how am I doing? How have I done on the first quarter? Is there anything I need to change? Do I need to address anything? Is there something that's not working? All of this is important, but it's part and parcel of knowing that you're establishing goals that are worthy of establishing in the first place. Now, then you get into the more manageable goals. So down into monthly targets. And so you've got your three month goals. Now, what are you going to achieve each month of those three months in order to kind of reach that? And by the end of this month, I'm going to have achieved the following five things or three things, whatever it might be. This then gets broken down into the weekly um, outcomes, as I call it. And so the idea is you start the week and I mean, don't get me wrong, these weeks, they're kind of crazy and, and stuff just hits me from all sides so quickly. And so it can be very easy for you to reach Friday and you kind of go, Jesus, it's Friday already. I can't believe it. And when you look and have a look at, you know, what you've achieved this week, you know, email got in the way. You spent the whole time, you know, responding to firefighting and emergencies and crises and stuff like that. And you look at your objectives for the month and your targets for the month, your objectives for the three quarters or for the quarter and and your week's outcomes and you achieved none of it. Like basically it means that you're standing still. So to use that marathon analogy, you did no training this week because you're not getting any closer to that big goal. So try to have a couple of outcomes and what you're trying to do is every morning when you get up, as I mentioned last week, you have the one priority of the day and that one priority should be the thing that is getting you closer to your outcome of the week. 
you go and create your daily plan. That is going to be your one priority. And uh, I mentioned something last week, and this is the frog, okay? When you're thinking about what it is you're going to do, when you're planning your week out or when you're planning your day, have a look back at your diary, have a look at your to-do list and try to identify the frog. And as I mentioned, the frog is this unpleasant, uh, uncomfortable thing or task that you need to do. And it's something that you've been avoiding. It's something you've been procrastinating on. It's something that it's just, it's a big, nasty kind of task that needs to be done. But because it's so unpleasant, you've been putting it on the long finger. You've been pushing it out further and further. That's something that weighs down on your shoulders and gets into the back of your mind. And you're like, oh God, I have to do that thing. There's nothing better than getting it done and behind you first thing in the morning because then the rest of the day is going to be easy. And that is something. Think of the frog as, you know, as an acronym. F for fear. Your fear of the task itself, okay? It's, it's that unpleasantness. It's, you just know that it's not going to be nice to have to do this thing. Regret, okay, is the next. So F and or, or for regret. You're going to be, you know, you're regretting the fact that you haven't achieved this yet or you haven't ticked it off your box. You're regretting the fact that it's still there on your list. Overwhelm is the O. Overwhelm, we all feel overwhelmed from time to time. That is when you have too much on your plate, you're do- trying to do too many things and so we get overwhelmed. And a lot of the time when you are overwhelmed, the frog is the thing that gets pushed to the side. And then finally, G, guilt. You have guilt because you don't like not achieving these things. And so that is where, you know, why you'll feel bad or guilty that this task is still sitting there on your objectives. Now, it's important to mention that all of this stuff I've been talking about, like it does not get done in one hour, okay? This is a body of work that's gonna take some time. If you've never done any of this before, you're talking about you know a couple of days of work and most people don't have that kind of time to, to, you know, to put into something. So you're going to have to spread the time out over a period. Unless, say for example, you're on vacation in Tenerife and then you can sit down, you can spend a lot of time on this kind of stuff. Now, um, if you can't, if, like I've, I do this all the time, I'm working on this all the time. So for me, I can incrementally work on it on a day-to-day basis. But if you're doing this for the very first time, you really need to get into you know, you need to look back. If you're trying to figure out what you want to achieve at some point in the future, it's often good to look back at when you were much younger and what, you know, what inspired you or what motivated you back then. And a lot of the time, that is a good hint towards what you really enjoy doing. Uh, a lot of the time people get into work and they start to forget about what it is that they actually enjoy doing. And so looking back to when your childhood or something like that, that can help figure out what is it that I really, really enjoy doing that I wasn't getting paid for it, but I really loved doing that. And that is often a good pointer towards what you uh, could be you know, looking at in the future. And so you put time into it. Um, the more time you put into this, the more clear you're going to get, the clearer you're going to get, the easier you're going to visualize this future. And um, hopefully you've found this to be useful. The more clear you are, the more focused you can be, the more disciplined you can be. And hopefully you're going to end up achieving your goal. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. To my right, I am going to be putting a link now to last week's video, just in case you didn't see it, uh, where I cover the discipline advantage. And I'm going to see you back here same time next week. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. See you then.